Welcome to Conversations with Marius Dosinescu. On this podcast, I sit down and interview the top SEO and e-commerce experts to bring you the latest insights and strategies for improving your online presence. Whether you're just starting out in the world of SEO or you're seasoned pro looking to stay up to date on the latest trends, this is the podcast for you. So, if you're ready to take your website to the next level and learn from the best in the industry, be sure to subscribe to Conversations with Marius Dosinescu. You can find us on aisa.ai, where you'll also find a wealth of useful information and amazing podcasts to help you grow your online business. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fifth episode of uh, Conversations with Marius Dosinescu. Uh, Today's guest uh, is a very, very special guest for, uh, for us, uh, Eli Schwartz. He's uh, an SEO expert and consultant with more than t- a decade of experience driving successful SEO and growth programs for leading business-to-business and business-to-consumer companies. Hello, Eli. Welcome. Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you for for being here. It's very important for us. Uh, actually, uh, I, uh, I started reading your book, uh, I think, two months or three months ago. I was the, very impressed uh, by the fact we... Uh, Actually, I believed uh, a lot in the product because I, uh, before uh, before starting my new business, I had an e-commerce business, and I I really believe uh, what you, what you are saying in the in the book, and I think it's a, it's an amazing book. Con- congratulations for writing it, and uh, I I really recommend it to to all uh, all our, our audience. Okay, tell us a few things about uh, about yourself. Thank you so much for having me, and I really appreciate you uh, reading the book. So. I wrote the book because um, my approach towards SEO is is not um, the common approach of let's write a bunch of content towards keywords. And really, the book was just a way to put those words down on paper to be able to share with others and be able to explain to others that maybe SEO isn't the way everyone thinks about, you know, again, throwing content out there, hacking algorithms, doing, doing all that, which is how I've been thinking for the last decade in my career. So a little bit about me. I, I started in digital marketing by working with affiliates, which I think was the best way to really learn about digital marketing, really learn about SEO from the people that did SEO the wrong way. So I learned black hat SEO from them. I learned how to really game the algorithm. Then I moved on to a startup where I brought some of those bad practices with me and the startup was venture funded. And we used those bad practices. We bought links. We were a little bit shady with content. And then we got hit by an algorithm update. We got hit by the Panda update in in 2010. So that's 12 years ago. And that's when I pivoted my entire approach towards this can't be the way that Google and search engines want things to be. This really has to be around using this, using SEO as a channel for people that are looking for something on organic search. And how do we build that thing that they're looking for? And I really spent the last decade plus building SEO and building efforts around that. So then I moved on to SurveyMonkey, where when I joined, they didn't really have um, any sustainable SEO traffic. They were visible on the the brand, they were visible on the word survey, but they were translating 16 languages. And I helped that turn in, them turn that into a revenue channel, which generated $200 million a year. And then I started consulting really the same thing with the same approach. How do you take what people are looking for, create the assets that they need to be, that they're, they need and that they want online and on the on the websites you're looking for, how do you create that and use that to build a revenue channel? And then only then as a part of the funnel to convert them into the right thing. So that that's the the quick overview of me and, and you know why I wrote the book and my approach towards SEO. Very uh, very impressive. Actually uh, as I as I, I was reading it uh, I was impressed about uh, the white hat SEO that you promoted there and uh, the fact that uh, actually you you looked at the user more than uh, at search engines. So basically, uh, wh- what is different? Let's explain to our audience. Uh, or of course, continue with your idea. But what's different to to this approach than the standard SEO? Just try to explain it uh, because our audience is not uh, formed by experts. So try to explain it as uh, as simple as possible for for our audience to to understand. So I, I think the, the simplest thing is for people that don't really have an understanding of SEO is that if you are focused on 
typical search and the way SEO is typically done, you can't explain what you're doing without using the word Google or search engine. When you're doing product-led SEO, the search engine is a non-factor. I'm building something because a user is going to be looking for it. The way they're going to be looking for it is with a search engine. That search engine could be Google, that could be Bing, that could be Yandex, that could be TikTok, it could be Apple, it could be Facebook. It really doesn't matter. I'm building something because a user wants to have an, a question answered. And this is also independent of ChatGPT. I don't think ChatGPT and I don't think any AI tool solves this problem. A user is looking for something. They want to understand something. I'm creating the thing that they want to find when they're doing that search. When you're doing traditional SEO, I'm doing something because I think it will help me appear better in the Google algorithm. And I'm going to write this content because I use this keyword tool. So that's the, really the differentiator. SEO organic search is a marketing channel, just like paid search is a marketing channel, just like advertising is a marketing channel. What are the things that I need to do best to position myself for the people that are going to arrive from this channel? Great. Uh, you mentioned uh, ChatGPT. Uh, it's uh, it's a lot of uh, there are a lot of rumors about uh, fighting a fight between ChatGPT and uh, Google. Uh, what's your opinion on on that? Uh, will ChatGPT change the way Google is working now, or what will happen from your opinion, from your point of view? So it's it's interesting that everyone thinks that Google's dead and Google there's no future for Google because of ChatGPT, but they're not focusing on the user. They're focusing on the solution. They're focusing on oh well, now we have an engine that spits out content. Again, I'm focusing from a user standpoint. From a user standpoint, uh, I was doing a search this morning that ChatGPT could not solve for me. I'm looking for a dry cleaner to drop a suit off. I want to know what the best place is. If I put that into ChatGPT. I, I'm sure that it could give me some sort of answer, but it wouldn't give me the answer that would make me happy with actually getting into my car and driving to the dry cleaner and knowing that it was a good price and it was good quality and it was going to be delivered on time. Only a search engine could do that. Only by doing a couple searches could I find who has the most reviews, what their pricing is, what their location is. So you need to understand what it is that someone wants from search and what kind of information they're looking for. And then you realize that there's so much that AI tools will never solve. An AI tool can tell you what the weather is. An AI tool can tell you how much the price of something is. But an AI tool cannot tell you what people's experiences are that you can read and feel. It can maybe spit that out, but again, it has to anonymize that. So I think that ChatGPT, AI content, Siri, Google Assistant, whatever tools out there is going to answer a subset of queries that users have but it in no way is going to compete with pure search engines. That I think just will simply not exist. Yeah, th that's a great opinion and I agree I agree with that. Uh, but what about the content generated by, by uh, ChatGPT, of course, adapted by, uh, by the users, by the SEO people and so on? What do you think about that? So the, the content again, I it does I don't think it really matters. So the content, a lot of content that people write, they go onto Fiverr, they go onto Upwork, and they pay someone very little money, and they uh, the content's terrible quality. So I think that AI content competes with that. AI content, if you could put in prompts and get a bunch of some great AI ideas and then turn that into great sentences, what difference does it make? You know, there's a lot of assistance already with tools like you write something in Gmail and it helps you finish the sentence. It doesn't really matter whether it came out an AI tool or it came out of your fingers on your keyboard. I think you definitely can't put in a prompt and spit out silly content and just post it as is. You do need to edit it. So it's making it a little bit easier. So anybody that says, oh, well, everything has changed isn't really looking at the trajectory of history and content. So, you know, a hundred years ago, if you want to publish, uh, there's no website, obviously, you publish a book, you wrote it out by hand, or you maybe used a typewriter. Now we have keyboards and can spit it out. We have Microsoft Office and we have, you know, uh, Google Docs. There are all these uh, tools that just change the nature of the way things are. And AI content's the same thing. You just need to write a little bit less. But in no way is it going to solve all the problems and you no longer need to write any content at all. It's just an advancement, it's just a step forward in the way things are done. Yeah, I, I really think uh, it's a very strong opinion. And uh, I think I, I used ChatGPT to generate a few articles. And uh, after that, I had to interfere on them. Uh, actually, on all of them, without, I couldn't publish uh, publish them directly. So you are right. 
Uh, okay, so the subject today uh, mainly it's about uh, e-commerce SEO because uh, I'm developing a, a tool that is dedicated to, to this industry and I want to help my audience to understand the, how they can do a better SEO with or without my, uh, my tool. Um, can you tell us uh, your approach on uh, SEO for an e-commerce website based on Pradalit's SEO or uh, the latest experience that you had? So e-commerce is... Uh, significantly easier to do basic SEO than uh, maybe content. However, being successful at e-commerce SEO is is much harder. So e-commerce SEO is really about taxonomy, categorization of the website, interlinking, technical SEO matters. But you don't want to really fill up each page with content because content doesn't matter when the user is buying. We're focusing on the user. So the basic things you need to do, very simple. Again, have everything visible, have the right images, have everything interlinked, but having it be successful, that becomes much harder. There, you need to move away from tr sort of traditional SEO, um, you know, technical SEO, and really think about building a brand. And that's maybe where links come in. So if you're building an e-commerce site, you can't expect to just compete with Amazon just because you exist or compete with all your competitors just because you exist. You really need to build out that brand and then you actually will succeed. But Again, this the simplistic part of this is you could use a template, make sure every page links to each other, write the good title of the products, make categories, and I think it's very simple. Uh, can you give us an example of a successful uh, startup in the e-commerce area you, you helped uh, grow? And if you can give us some uh, figures, some uh, metrics? I don't think I could share metrics, but in, you know, an e-commerce product I work with is a, a company called Fair, F-A-I-R-E. They are a, a wholesale marketplace, so sort of like Shopify meets Etsy. And for them, a lot of the effort was really around how do you surface all the products they have available? How do you find all the things that users are potentially looking for? Again, not at all about writing lots of content, really about how you structure the website so all the hundreds of thousands of pages link to each other. And how do you learn from the success that you're having to continue iterating on that and to continue growing it? So I'm really sorry you cannot share some metrics. Uh, where do, did you double their traffic? Do you, I mean, it will be very helpful to to understand uh, how your method can uh, can be applied to e-commerce industry and what uh, the results can be applying your method. I mean, when I started with them, they had very little SEO traffic, despite already being a big brand. Um, and now they drive, um, you know, many millions of dollars from the SEO channel. So the potential here is massive. And for e-commerce, it's one of the the only sustainable, affordable ways to really grow a business. You can continue to buy traffic, but obviously that's expensive, and your competitors will make it cost more money. Of course, and the, the traffic will become more and more expensive. Okay, uh, another question that I had uh, during my encounters with different uh, e-shop owners and also SEO professionals, uh, I am a true believer of the fact that the SEO part, at, at, at least 80% of SEO can be automated. Uh, what's your opinion on that? You can automate anything you want. It's really about the user. So, um, you know, again, think about any other channel. I don't know if, if you've ever done any paid advertising, but he, I, you know, way back when, when I did paid advertising, you wrote ads out and you picked your keywords and you went onto you know, Google and you adjusted your campaigns. And now most of that is automated. Is it wrong? No, it's an improvement in the future. I, SEO is the same thing. If you're writing basic e-commerce content, you don't have to write it out by hand if that's what the users don't need all that handwritten content. So I, I think that's that's really the thing to focus on. Automation in itself is not a problem. It's the output of that that could be a problem. If it's what the users expect and will appreciate and will resonate with them, by all means, use any automation you want. If you're writing boring content and you're using AI content and you're creating automation that doesn't make any sense, then that's a problem. But there's no reason that you need to like manually link every page to each other if there's an automated tool to do that. There's no reason that you need to write the title tag if there's an automated tool to write the title tag. So I don't think the tool in itself is a problem. It's the output and outcome of that tool that could be problematic. So you're saying that the user should be in, uh, in front of all this. If the user is not satisfied, 
actually the problem will be with bounce rate and so on. So in, in the end, if a content and the automation, the output is not good, then uh, it will be a lot of problems for the user. Okay, very interesting. Uh, you you worked with a lot of brands like WordPress, Shutterstock, Coinbase, Zendesk, and so on. Uh, what what are they doing differently than the small companies? Uh, do you have some insights how we should adapt uh, as small companies? How should I adapt our processes and our work on the SEO to become I know better at, at it or more successful? And the, the key thing is really focus on what the users are looking for. If all you're focusing on is what's an algorithm hack and how do I improve upon you know something anybody else is doing, I'm using a keyword, a, a, an SEO tool that tells me there's a gap between what I do and what they do, you're going to be chasing your tail. If you really focus on what does my user that I've created my company, what do they really want and what can I do better than everyone else? I think that's the pathway to success. Yes, you may be disadvantaged in the search engines if other companies are trying hacks and they're better at it than you. However, ultimately, search engines use AI and they they use machine learning to continuously improve their algorithms. So as you do the things that you're supposed to do, the search engines will catch up. If you're providing a better product for the users, you're providing better information for the users, maybe the search engines don't recognize it today, but they absolutely will. So don't focus on SEO as the goal, focus on users as the goal and where how you can better improve your product and your experience and your messaging for those users. I think it's a, it's a very strong message and uh, I, I will try to apply it because uh, actually I did also this mistake. I'm following the keywords, not uh, sometimes not uh, the user. So I should uh, I should adapt my uh, my strategies. Uh, in terms of uh, Google updates, there are more than 4,500 updates, uh, at least in 2021 of Google algorithm. Uh, you said in your book that uh, um th those uh, those updates should not impact to if you are if you are doing a very good job and also the user is, it's uh, is the main uh, main focus but how do you keep up uh, with with all this uh, do do you take the updates in consideration uh sometimes when you are working with a lot of information you you tend to uh to listen too much on on, on this uh um, algorithm updates and so on. How 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 can you keep up with with this? How do you do it? I don't think I pay attention to any algorithm updates because I, I I view the algorithm updates as a constant improvement on the on, on Google or in particular, but any algorithm update, any search engine, really trying to improve what it is that the users are looking for and how to match what they have in their engines in their database towards what the users are looking for. So if you're doing the right thing you'll usually benefit from that. So I'm not paying attention to algorithm updates. I'm not concerned that I'm going to be penalized because I don't ever focus on doing the wrong thing. So I don't think there's any recent algorithm update that I even dug into. There's no site that I'm working with that has any concern that they're doing the wrong thing and that they'll get in trouble. Hey, yeah. So you, you are obsessed with the user. That's great. <laughs> That's I am true. obsessed with building products around the user and yeah. as the search engines are too. So Google's mission is really building great products for users. They're really understanding and categorizing the world's information. So I, I think that aligns with what they want. They're not aligned with, hey, how do we find the best domain authority links? They're not aligned with how do you find the best interlinked content or the best keywords? So if you're focusing on those kinds of things, you're not going marching in the same direction that they're marching in. So yes, I'm obsessed with users because that's ultimately what users are doing. They're using search engines as the medium to get there. It's um, The analogy might be you're going on a trip and instead of being obsessed with the ultimate place you're trying to get on that trip, you're obsessed with the road and what the road looks like and how the road feels. Google's that road. You should be on Google as short as possible. You just want to be found. So, you know, if there's a shortcut where uh, it's a better way to be found because that's exactly what the users want, do that. If there's a shortcut because it's better for the search engines, don't do that. That's that's a great, great advice and great uh, comparison. Uh, I never thought about this, but uh, uh, it's it's a great comparison. Uh, what do you think about the the future? How is your landscape with uh, with looking uh, in the next uh, I don't know two five years two to five years? I think that we may see another search engine come out. 
which I think will be good for SEO because people will be less focused on Google. I mean, it's very possible Apple launches a search engine or Amazon launches a search engine, maybe Facebook launches a search engine. So that's what I see as the landscape. And I, I think that sometimes people get too focused on what's right in front of them without seeing how there could be massive changes in the way things work. So I think it was very likely to think that there could have been a chat GPT if you focused on how things were already progressing with Google Assistant and Siri. However, everyone got surprised by it. So the same thing I believe is true with, with search engines. Right now we're focused on what's Google going to do next year? What if it's not even Google? What if it's Apple? Like we're not paying it. What if it's TikTok? We're not paying attention to any of these things. So really focusing on the user and the search engine as the medium for it, it doesn't really matter what changes in SEO. It's user behavior that will continuously change. Maybe users will use more images to search. Maybe they'll use more voice to search, but it'll be slight improvements on what they do today. No big surprises, I think. Like whatever they do, you know, next year will be an improvement in two, like they'll improve on that in two years from now. Sounds very good. Uh, what about paid advertising? Uh, I listened to a few podcasts with you and uh, you were pro advertising, paid advertising also. Uh, do you think uh, for an e-commerce website, uh, the, uh, the owner, the marketing department should approach a uh, combined uh, strategy between uh, paid ads and uh, SEO ad and SEO, of course, strategy? Uh, and if yes, what will be the percent percentage? Do you think they should focus more on uh, SEO and the organic traffic or they, uh, they should focus more on uh, paid advertising and, of course, the users, like the user, like you said? I would focus on whatever converts the most and wherever that you know that the the best upside is. If you're competing directly with Amazon, it's unlikely you're going to outrank Amazon on search. You may want to do more paid advertising. If you don't have strong competition, it really depends on where you're going to get the most long, um, lifetime value, the most long-term customers. So I don't think that's a you know there's a fixed answer for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking for a fixed answer, but it's okay. I, I don't think there can be. That, that's that's good. Okay, now a few personal questions. How uh, how much hours do you sleep at night? Um, yeah, anywhere from like six to eight. That's good. Are you married? Yes. That's good. With kids? Four kids. Oh, that's very very good. Okay, if you be uh, if you would want to be an, uh, an uh, CEO of a big company, what that company will be? I don't think I ever want to be a CEO of a company. Why? I like building things and working with people and helping people to do things. And CEOs have to focus on leadership and things at a high level. I like being at the low level. I like the I like getting my hands dirty, rolling up my sleeves, and working directly with things rather than that high level communication and leadership. I think is necessary for a CEO, unless you're talking about like a five person company. Okay, <laughs> that's very uh, very nice. Okay, if you're being advice, uh, except the ones that you already have given, uh, like uh, focusing on a user, but uh, give us some advices for the e-commerce uh, industry. Uh, we we still have five minutes. Uh, help us. I don't know, give some advices to e-shop owners, how they should approach everything besides uh, what you have already said. So the, the big thing is there's no reason you have to do SEO. You can get away with not doing any SEO if you have other channels. You know, there's e-commerce sites I've talked to where their entire inbound funnel comes from Instagram. So if Instagram is your channel, you don't necessarily have to do SEO. You should do what makes the most money for you. The, uh, the other advice is really, really understand your attribution. So that doesn't mean you need to get in there with multi-touch attribution and say, this is how long my, you know, this is how long it takes from the time someone approaches the, gets on the website until they convert. No, understand your channels at a broad high level. So understand that Instagram works for you like this and SEO works for you like this. If you don't have any understanding of SEO, it's hard to really justify any sort of investment to this channel. So just understand that attribution and understand what converts and what works for you, your business. And that should help you understand, of course, where you put your investment, where you should put your time, what the channels are that you can optimize and iterate against. But again, there's no channel that you have to do. You should just really understand those numbers. And then the last piece of advice I would say is really extends on this, which is, a lot of people in SEO, they use the word keywords and they use the word Google. And I say, like, can you describe what you do for SEO without using the word Google and using the word search engine? 
That's important. Another word that I think everyone should really focus on is buyer's journey and funnel. So understand your journey, understand your funnel. That's so much more important than knowing your keywords. Understand like what converts customers, where they come from, what makes them come back. That's the most important thing for your business. Sounds uh, sounds a very good piece of advice. Thank you for that. Uh, and the last question, uh, do you have any recommendations uh, for books that you, I don't know, books that you have read or a book that you recommend to e-commerce owners or SEO professionals? So, of course, you should read my book, Product-Led SEO, that gives you a high-level <laughs> high level overview of, of how you should think about SEO from a strategic standpoint. The other book I'd recommend that you do, that you read to really understand SEO is The Art of SEO. So it's about a 900 page book, super detailed, definitely something that you understand. Um, the other thing is, and you know, you don't really need books for SEO, just experiment and make sure you learn from your experiments. Thank you very much. Uh, the advices are great. Uh, thank you for your time. I uh, I'm really happy we we got a chance to uh, to to discuss and I hope in the future uh, you'll uh, join us uh, maybe you know, we'll meet in the United States and we'll uh, make uh, a live uh, interview now it's only uh, through through Zoom thank you very much yeah thank you for having me have a nice evening bye bye yeah bye thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode.